Buildings define the character of a city. They distinguish the generic from the grand. They offer a beautiful and sophisticated environment to live. They stand as monuments of dignity and pride and will be around much longer than you and I. So it's wise to preserve them. For when you chip away at a city's character, it's a very dangerous thing. Many of us regret some Salem buildings that have been torn down. We all look back and wonder, who let this happen? It just seems so foolish, didn't they know what they had? Most people assume that such regrettable demolition wouldn't happen in this day and age, but it does. It's actually about to happen right under your very nose. This is St. Joseph's Church in the Point. Doesn't look like your average Salem church, does it? I mean, the brick isn't your typical yellow or red. It's more of a pure white with a slash of red to draw you into the doors. And while I can't find any of those arches or pointy steeples that I see so often, it's as if the architect was more interested in the proportions of cubes, slender lines, and right angles. The shape is very unique. In fact, it sort of resembles a cross from above. And Jesus, look at that crucifix displayed so proudly on the front of the building. I've never seen that before. In fact, I've never seen a church like this ever in my life, have you? Maybe that's why some don't like it at first, because it's just so different. The architect wasn't interested in repeating a style of the past, but doing something entirely new and revolutionary. His name was James J. O'Shaughnessy, and his church, built in 1949, is a rare example of the international style not just in Salem, but also New England. In the next six weeks, it will be completely raised and replaced with something a little less special. The sad thing is, it could have been saved. You see, the government supports affordable housing, and they were giving $5 million to fund the project. But there was a catch. When a project involves federal funding, that could negatively affect properties eligible for the National Register of Historic Places, the proposal must first undergo a 106 review. St. Joe's was eligible, and the 106 review was initiated by two groups, the Massachusetts Department of Housing and Community Development and the North Shore Home Consortium. Whether or not these two groups were neutral is up to you. From their website, at least, they seem a bit more inclined to side with housing over preservation. But the choice had been made, and when the 106 review was complete, they published their results and held a public meeting. They found that St. Joe's was indeed significant enough to be eligible for the National Register. They felt demolition of the church would be the worst adverse effect possible. But because they didn't find any feasible alternative to reuse the church, they decided to release the government funding to the developer. But they were wrong. There was, in fact, a feasible alternative, designed by a very prominent architect, Edward Nielsen. His design preserved the structure of the church, while keeping the same number of affordable housing units as Pua. Not only were these units bigger, but they were also cheaper to build. Historic Salem believed this alternative was feasible, and were given 15 days to object to the 106 review. After some heated debates, a vote was cast, and attorney John Carr was given the green light to file suit. Mayor Driscoll wasn't too happy about this. She has always been an unapologetic supporter of PUA's development. She applied pressure to HSI board members, urging them to drop their appeal. The Salem Evening News blasted HSI's efforts, and the Salem Chamber of Commerce, the Salem Partnership, and the Point Neighborhood Association were vocally opposed to the appeal. If HSI stuck together, the church would have been saved. But the backlash was so strong that members began to waver. A revote was taken, and the majority ruled against the appeal. For the first time, Historic Salem voted against their core principle of preservation. They signed an agreement not to interfere in the future. In exchange, the developer said he would try to preserve two other buildings on the site, although this was not guaranteed. 
Now, some heralded this as a compromise, but let's be real. Reuse of the church would have been the compromise. It worked for the old Salem jail, and it could have worked for St. Joe's. But now, it's too late. All the information, at least, is preserved for all to see and consider. Because 50 years from now, when Salemites are looking at old photographs of St. Joseph's Church, they're going to utter one thing. What were they thinking? Lord, don't move the mountain, but give me strength to climb it please don't move that stumbling block but lead me 